Hey there, so today I'm going to show you how to plot geographical data using MATLAB and specifically how you can create land or ocean masks to the data depending on your needs. First of all, I'm going to read a text file using the read table function and then I'm going to assign each column its name. So if I run this section, this is what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a table with the column names that I specified, which is day, time, lat, long, res ID, and NSTA. Great. A thing I want to mention before we move to our next step is that I found MATLAB can't always read every extension that we give it. For example, in my previous work, I had to work with log files. And log files are generally just text files, but if I attempt to read the log files using the read table, we get this error, meaning that MATLAB doesn't recognize how exactly should it read the log file. I found that if you specify the file type that you want MATLAB to use in order to read the files, for example, if I'm putting the flag file type and I'm just saying text, I order MATLAB to read those log files as a text. So if I'm going to do this, I can get the table, which I couldn't get before. This is something you need to bear in mind when you're using read table with MATLAB. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to extract the lat and the long from our table. So this is a simple way to do so. If I'm going to run this code here, I'm going to get the variable data, which contains the column lat and long. If you look closely, we have the lat and long columns. I've extracted the entire lat column into a variable and the entire long column into a variable. And then I've combined them both. And I did so because it's going going to be much easier to work with data this way. Afterwards, I can create a bivariate histogram using hist3. And what hist3 function receives is the data, which are the two columns that we've extracted from the united table data. And then I'm binning the data using the flag edges, which is going to be in my data using the lat and the long as follows. So for the lat, I'm starting from minus 90, going to 91, and I'm binning the data with one degree hops at a time. So for example, if we're going to have a lat that is 89.1 and 89.5, they're all under the one degree criteria and they're going to be binned together. So the same thing we're going to do for our lungs. We start the binning from 180 to 181 and we're doing the hops each two degrees. And I've done so because we want to create eventually a matrix that is going to be 180 on 180 values, because that's how we're going to plot afterwards the data globally. Great. So the next step in our journey here is the following. This can look quite scary. So let's break it down to pieces. In order to plot the data, we need to have the lat, the long, and the value that we want to plot. So if we're going to use this line of code here that creates our histogram, you can see we've got a double, which is 180 on 180. This is account for all the data that we had in each box, in each bin. So in this bin, we have 34 values. In this bin, we have 278 values. And we can see different bin counts in each of the bins. But this is great, but we don't have the lat and the long of each point. So we need to create it ourselves. How do we do this? We do it using this line of code here. And what it does is as follows. The line space function is a function that creates a series of numbers. We have a starting point and end point and how many values we want 
in each series. So in this series here, we're creating a number series that starts with minus 180, goes up to 180 and creates 180 values in this line series. We do this for our longs and we do the same thing for our lots. So we have the starting point, which is minus 90 up to 90. It is the end point. And also here we want to have 180 values. So this is what Lightspace does. It creates series of numbers. Afterwards, I already told you that what we want is a matrix that is going to contain the lat and the long for our entire matrix and we do so using the mesh grid. So mesh grid is going to receive those two number series and it's going to create a matrix for our long and our lat. Let's run this section here in order to understand this concept better. And what we can see is that we created a matrix which starts with minus 180, goes up to 180, and has 180 rows. The same thing we can see for our lats. We go from minus 90 up to 90, and we have 180 rows on 180 columns. In order to understand and this concept of matrices a little better, I want you to look at this picture here. And what we see in this picture is that we're creating two matrices from minus 180 to 180 and from minus 90 to 90. And at the end, we're going to receive a matrix that will have a long and lat value for each bin in the data. Great. So we have our histogram, our matrices, one for the lots and one for the longs. So how can we combine these two together? We need to glue them together. So we do this step over here. So I want you to look at this section of code and we begin this section with the land mask. So land mask is a function that can receive a lat, a long, another variable, which is the Z variable, and it can mask the area that we don't want to see. So in this way here, we can mask the land. This is why this function is called land mask. In this line here, we basically define what the land is. Afterwards, as I said, we want to mask our land. Afterwards, we're going to the land from our histogram and everything that is under the category of land is going to be NAN. So if I run this code here and we are going to see what land is. So the land variable is basically a representation of zero and one, zero being not land and one being land, zero is false and one is true. And we can see that we have a matrix here that's on top of our hist three matrix and it represents the land parts and the non-land parts of our histogram. Afterwards, we can see that in those NAN parts here is the parts that are defined as land. So every part that land mask defined as land is going to be represented as NAN. And we do this in order to not plot the land data and to get only the data that is outside the land. Afterwards, we're using the world map world, which is a type of a map. And we're going to use the P color M function, which creates a map of colors for our lat, long and histogram. And it's going to color the non-land areas by the scale of the values that we got in the histogram. And then we're going to show the land areas 
we're going to give them a full transparency, meaning that all the data that is going to be under the category of land is going to receive a face alpha of zero, meaning that it will going to be completely transparent. So if we will run this section of code now, what we can see is that we receive a map, a global map containing only the ocean data of that map. So what if you want to create opposite mask, meaning you want to mask all the things that are not land, all the things that are seas or oceans and get only the data inside the land. So you can do this very simply with this section. So this is identical to the first section, but the only thing that changes is this character here, which in MATLAB means not. So everything that is not land is going to be masked. So let's reset our data because we created a land mask before in our histogram, making everything that is land as NAN. So I want to run this section here in order to reset the data. And now if I run this section, this is what I get. So what I get here is only representation of data inside our land. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you gained knowledge about how to plot global data using MATLAB. And I wish you all a great day. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.